Welcome back, boys and girls, ladies and gentlemen. This is Real Big Ten Football Talk Plus One with Chris. I am Chris. This is still week eight of the 2018 college football season. And this game is a little bit of a head scratcher for some of you. Because it's not a, not a seemingly high profile matchup. But it is a possible upset alert type of game. Which game am I talking about? I am, of course, talking about the number two Ohio State Buckeyes. 7-0, 4-0 in Big Ten play. Going on the road to West Lafayette, Indiana to play a very up and resurgent, up and coming Purdue Boilermakers team sitting at 3-3, three 2-1 and three, two and one in Big Ten play. A dark horse, possibly, for the Big Ten West. Maybe. Without further ado, let us look at who these two teams have played. Ohio State, very tough schedule that they have played so far. A questionable game against Oregon State to start of the year. Yes, they scored 77 points, but they gave up 31 points to a comparatively weak Oregon State Beavers team, but they are still a Pac-12 team, so I can't take much away from Ohio State. But when you look at 77 points scored, that's great. But you get up 31 points to a weaker opponent. That's not great. The next week, Rutgers. Very well played game on both sides of the ball. 52-3. Only got up 3 points to a conference opponent. That is impressive regardless of who it is. It is still a conference foe even if it is a very struggling Rutgers ball team or ball club. The week after that, they did go to a hostile environment in Arlington, Texas to face a very tough TCU Horn Frogs team, and despite some miscues for Ohio State, they did not win that game 40 to 28. Again, like I said, maybe luck, but sometimes better lucky than good, considering TCU did make a lot of mistakes going down the stretch in that game. But Ohio State took advantage of it and did win the game, so good on the Buckeyes. The next week, Tulane. Good win, but not a great team. 49-6, to that's why I have it in yellow, but a good dominant victory nonetheless. And then they did go to Happy Valley. Wide out, primetime game, and did beat those Nittany Lions 27-26. to But Nittany Lions did lose a game after that. So, how good are the Nittany Lions? Who can say? But they were a good team at that time, and Ohio State did beat them 27-26. to Ohio State followed up with victories against Indiana and Minnesota. I have the Minnesota game in yellow because Ohio State should have dominated more in that game. Minnesota was a tough team, but Ohio State is a more talented, tougher opponent. They should have dominated Minnesota more than they did. Purdue, tough schedule so far in the year. Lost to Northwestern, first game of the year. I watched that game. It was a tough, well-fought game for both teams. But, I do believe if Purdue have started and kept David Blau in the game, they would have won that game. Questionable, as I can say, but they did lose the game nonetheless. The next week, they did lose to a quite weak Mac opponent in Eastern Michigan. Eastern Michigan has done well in the last couple of years, but they are still a comparatively weak Mac team. Purdue should have beaten them, and they lost by one. Now, some could argue Purdue is still reeling. They were... On over for the Northwestern game, what have you. It was still a Mac opponent, and you got to win those games, and they lost 2019. Missouri did better. They scored 37 points, but they did give up 40 points to a decent Missouri ball club. But still, it is a loss. So that next week, what did Purdue do? They ended up beating number 23, Boston College, in West Lafayette, but still, a good quality win that I will go over more in depth here in a minute in their marquee win segment of this show. And then they followed up with two road wins against Nebraska and Illinois. In fact, they smashed Illinois. That same Illinois team that gave USF everything they could handle earlier in the year. A good victory in Champaign. And a good victory in Lincoln against Nebraska. A Nebraska team that is Desperate for a win, and a lot of people, including myself, thought that Nebraska might have gotten that victory against this Purdue Boilermakers team in Lincoln. That did not happen. Good win for Purdue. Now let's look and see more in depth that that Purdue win against Boston College. Boston College was dominated on every 
aspect of that game. The only bad part that Purdue really had was they only had 17 first downs and 76 rushing yards. Didn't need him considering David Blau played almost perfect. 21-28 passing. Three touchdowns. Zero picks. Very well played game for Purdue. They held the Golden Eagles of Boston College to 229 total yards. Four picks this Purdue Boilermakers grabbed from that Boston College quarterback. They held the Golden Eagles to 144 yards to the air. 85 on the ground. They held that team to 25% third down efficiency. Very dominant win for Purdue. And, and also, Purdue did hold onto the ball for 37 minutes and 2 seconds. That is, 37 minutes and 2 seconds that Boston College defense was on the field. Very well played game for Purdue. Only 2 penalties in that game for Purdue for 25 yards. Boston College, 7 penalties for 60 yards. Really, I don't really need to say much more about this game. Purdue dominated on both sides of the ball. Very well played game for Purdue. Ohio State always go back to that Penn State game for their marquee win of the year thus far. But the Buckeyes did not play well in this game. They won. They won through grit, determination, because they sure didn't win on the stat sheet. 23.5% third down efficiency. 119 yards on the ground. 389 total offensive yards for the Buckeyes. 10 penalties they racked up for 105 yards. Rodgers they had going for them. They only turned the ball over once. It's good. But they did give up 492 total yards of offense to that Penn State and Indian Lion team. Why did, Penn, why did Penn State lose, might you ask? They couldn't convert on third down. That's why they lost. I watched this game as well. This was not a well-played game on either team on third down efficiency. It seemed like when both teams had third down, they considered punting the ball because they knew they couldn't get it on third down. It was a bad game on that respect. But a tough team, a tough game for two tough teams, but it was a good victory for Ohio State. A tough battle testing, gut wrenching, gut check of a win for Ohio State. How these two teams played against each other the last five. The last time these two teams played was in 2013. The number at that time, the number four ranked Ohio State Buckeyes. Crushed Purdue in West Lafayette. 56 to nothing. What happened the next year? 2012. I meant to correct that. My mistake. That was Ohio State. Being Purdue 29-22 in overtime. But was not Purdue playing themselves? You're not imagining things. I am not insane. I just forgot to put that in there. I apologize. But that was Ohio State being Purdue 29-22 in overtime in 2012. 2011. Purdue shocked the Buckeyes. 26-23. In overtime in West Lafayette. 2010. Ohio State did smash that Boilermaker team again, this time in Columbus, 49 to nothing. In 2009, that was Purdue being Ohio State 26 to 18, a very shocking fashion. Considering Ohio State was number seven ranked at that time. As you can see, this is not, oh, Purdue can't win type of game. Purdue has beaten this Ohio State team in the past. They just haven't played each other in years. How both teams done against the run? Not very well. And not very well for the run. In fact, both teams ranked 58th and 51st, respectively, nationally in running the ball, football. Purdue, 179.3 yards per game. Ohio State, 185.4 yards per game. Both teams have done poor, not poorly, but not great against the run either. 148 yards given up on average for Ohio State. It's 55th nationally. Purdue have given up on average 146.8 yards per game nationally. Ranks 53rd. Not great. Passing is where both these teams excel. Ohio State 73.3% completion percentage. That is first by a large margin nationally. Passing per game, Ohio State is almost an air raid offense with those numbers. 371.4 yards per game as third nationally. Boys and girls, you want to guess who's first and second? That's right, you guessed it, Texas Tech and Washington State. Of course, I don't know which one is ranked which, but you can imagine. Ohio State is not an air raid offense, but they play like one. Purdue, 330.8 yards per game, that's 7th nationally. David Blau has done very well to rekindle that Purdue offense, which was very strong, which is 
struggled a lot for the first three games of the year. Both teams let the quarterbacks get hit a little bit too often. Ohio State's given up 11 sacks per year, or 11 sacks this year, which is 35th nationally. Purdue has allowed David Blau to be put on his back with the ball in his hand 12 times this year. That is 61st nationally. Neither team does great against the pass. In fact, Purdue does an awful job defending the pass, considering Purdue has given up 267.5 yards per game on average through the air. That is 108th nationally. Purdue got to stop somebody through the air. Ohio State has given up 221.6 yards per game. That is 59th nationally. Again, but guys, got to stop somebody through the air. Defensive or offensive efficiency tells the story. Well, I, they both are pretty, pretty even in time of possession. Ohio State, though, does own the field position, starting field position for their offense, starting at their own 34 on average, whereas Purdue starts consistently on the wrong side of their own 30. Not great, not horrible at their own 29 on average. Third down efficiency, both teams do well at the 49%. Ohio State is 12th nationally, whereas Purdue is 45.6% per game. That is 25th nationally. Not bad. Ohio State has only turned the ball over six times this year. That's an average of less than one per game. Pretty good. Purdue has turned the ball over nine times this year. It's almost two per game. That is a warning sign. Ohio State, atrocious inside the 20. They are only scoring touchdowns 68.7% of the time. 81.3% they score on average inside the 20. That's 88th nationally. Purdue, horrible at scoring touchdowns inside the red zone, considering... They are at 54.8% per game. They do they have scored inside the 20, though, 90.3% of the time, which is 27th nationally. But Purdue, you got to stop settling for three points so much. You need to score more touchdowns inside the 20. Ohio State, awful penalties per game. At, 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 on average, committing eight per game. You're giving up 74.4 penalty yards per game, Ohio State. Very horrible. Purdue, you were bad at this as well earlier in the year, but you have done a better job of cleaning that up. But you are still, on average, committing 6.6 .6 penalties per game for 65 yards. Again, warning sign going forward. Got to be careful when you're playing a tough team like Ohio State. You can't allow Ohio State to stay in the game through committing unnecessary penalties. Defensive splits, not great for Purdue, but not bad for Ohio State. Ohio State's opponents are starting on average on their own 24-yard line. That is good. Purdue, your opponents are starting on average at their own 28.5-yard line. Not great. Ohio State, you've gained 13 turnovers this year. That's very impressive. Six picks you've taken. Seven fumbles you've recovered. Very good. 24 sacks you've had this year as a team. That is fifth nationally. You are, you are averaging just over three sacks per game. Very good. But your, your defense could do, do with some work statistically since you have given up 369.6 yards per game. That is 58th nationally. Purdue, don't have many good things to say for you on defense. You've only gained eight turnovers this year, but you have gained eight interceptions. But you've not recovered a single fumble yet this year. That can come back to haunt you. When you force fumbles, you've got to recover some. You've got to stop that offense when you have the chance. 17 sacks this year. That's pretty good. 30th nationally. You're going to have to increase that number to beat this Ohio State team in this game. Defensively, horrible for you, Purdue. You've given up, on average, 414.3 yards per game of defense. That's 92nd nationally. Got to clean that up going forward. Neat little tidbits. Both teams haven't played each other since 2013, as I already mentioned. Ohio State did win that affair, 56 to nothing, in West Lafayette. Both teams have played each other off and on since 1919. Ohio State did win that inaugural matchup, 20 to nothing, in Columbus. Purdue did not beat Ohio State for the first time until 1938, and that game was in Columbus, 12 to nothing. Ohio State does own this series, 39 
14 and 2. Key to the game for Ohio State, you have to convert on third down to keep your high-powered offense on the field. You have to play a clean game, reduce the penalties, and you also have to play four quarters of solid football, not two. I've noticed most of the year. You have played poorly in the first half and you made second half adjustments, and that's why you're undefeated at Ohio State. Against this very hungry, resurgent, winning, recently winning team of Purdue, you've got to play four solid quarters. And you've got to start hot. Shut down that Purdue team early. Don't give them any hope. The worst thing you can do for a highly favored team as you are Ohio State is to give that lesser opponent hope. You cannot do that. You have to score quickly and often to shut this Purdue team down early, psychologically. You have to extend drives to good solid running with good passes to keep the Purdue defense honest. To hit David Blau and force him into making crucial mistakes. For Purdue, you're at home. And you're riding a three-game three winning streak. And you've done well in those three games. You've got to use that to come out of the gates hot. you got to hold on to the momentum through extending drives, through converting on third down. Keep their Ohio State offense on the field or off the field. Keep Dwayne Haskins being cold on the sideline. Purdue, you've got to score six inside the 20. You can't settle for three all the time and expect to win these high-profile games. You've got to get six points inside the 20, not so much three all the time. Considering you may not get many opportunities inside the 20, you got to make the best of them through getting touchdowns versus field goals. You have to give David Blau time to throw. He's a good quarterback. We have to give him some time to throw. And on the flip side, you have to hit Dwayne Haskins, force him outside of the pocket, where he has been uncomfortable with the ball in his hands. If you've watched Penn State, you'll understand. In that first half, he looked very scared because Penn State kept hitting him in the mouth. Purdue, you've got to do that. You've got to make your own second half adjustments and come out in the second half hot as well because you're facing a very good second half team in Ohio State. If the game is close at the end of the first half, Purdue, you might have some problems. Now, who to pick on paper? The rankings. Bruce 3-3. Three three. <laughs> they lost to Eastern Michigan. Ohio State beat TCU. They beat Penn State. Dominated the Rutgers. Hammered Oregon State. Beat a decent Indiana team. Beat a very decent Minnesota team. The Ohio State team is a good, solid bunch, but they've had their mistakes, their miscues. They're young. Purdue is a veteran led team with a good coach and Purdue has done a better job as of late to not beat themselves through committing too many penalties you're at home Williams going to be with you you're on a three game winning streak you dominated that Boston College team Ohio State you didn't dominate Penn State you found a way to win but how are you going to do Ohio State when you're going up against a weaker opponent psychologically when that weaker opponent gets a lead on you now, you've had deficits earlier in the year with Minnesota in particular. But Minnesota is a tough team, a rebuilding team, but a solid ball club with good coaching. And they've been consistently a good team. Purdue's not been a consistently good team, but they're a scrappy bunch this year. Craving a win. Craving a high-profile victory. Because what's something Purdue has lacked in recent years, they haven't been able to win against the big bruisers of the Big Ten. This year will be different. Ohio State have been saying most of the year you commit far too many penalties. That will come back to bite you. Also, you rely far too much on a young quarterback. A good, very good young quarterback in Dwayne Haskins. But you rely too much on the pass. You've got to rely a little bit more on the run. You get away from the run too often. Too early too often, I should say. I do believe in this game it's going to come back to bite you. When you can't get anything going on the ground against this Purdue team, when you go to the air too much, you're going to pay for it. You're going to commit the wrong penalty at the wrong time to allow Purdue to score a touchdown, and you're going to give up the win to this Purdue team in West Lafayette. It's going to be the biggest win Purdue has had since that shocker in 2011 when this Purdue team did beat this Buckeye team in overtime. 
this game could go into overtime, could go into double or triple overtime. But I do believe this Purdue team does have the grit that takes to beat an Ohio State team. Why well, pick Purdue 24 23? Because of their grit. I know usually I use stats to back up my claims. This particular game is a little different. It's different because, despite the stats, despite the tougher schedule for Ohio State, Ohio State has struggled against weaker opponents in the past anyway. So look at last year. They beat, they no sooner beat Penn State, and then got their tails blown off by Iowa the next week to a, not a bad Iowa team, but pretty mediocre. It's run-of-the-mill Iowa team. This Purdue team is similar, and they could do the same thing. And if they do, it's going to be a head-scratcher of a loss. They don't probably haunt Ohio State going into the end of the year. But I do believe Ohio State will taste defeat this week to a resurgent, tough, gritty, scrappy Purdue Boilermaker team. That's it. I made my pick. They come back to haunt me. You all might say next week, you're an idiot. Why the heck did you pick Purdue, you fool? But I did pick Purdue. I've said it, and I will stand by it. Enjoy the rest of the games this week. Please do like, subscribe, share this video with your friends if you do enjoy my content. Again, it does help the channel grow. If you did not like this video, please hit that dislike button and let me know why you didn't like this video. Was it because I picked the Purdue Boilermakers over your beloved Buckeyes? Please let me know. Let me know why you disagreed with me or why you just disliked my video. Enjoy the games this weekend, and I have enjoyed this thus far, and I plan on doing more throughout the rest of the year. Until next time, guys, enjoy.